Greetings! Welcome to this Rolf Crate Preview. I hope you're ready to save the universe because it needs you now in Exodus. In this game, the universe is being corrupted and is slowly falling apart. In order to save it, you will need to find four artifacts from a precursor race that is now long gone and collect those artifacts and bring them to the central corruption point. You'll be doing so in your own ships because at the start of the game, each person gets a unique ship that not only has its own stats, but also dice used for combat, upgrades, and other unique abilities. The way it works is you'll choose one, get the resources they get, and as the game progresses, you can either upgrade your energy track, which lets you use abilities, or gain experience in a unique way for the ship to actually gain those abilities. Each ability has its two sides, so you can choose whichever one fits better for whatever the situation has at hand, really allowing you to be your own ship as maybe someone else is more combat heavy, maybe someone's more healing, or someone is more just running around the map trying to explore it as fast as possible. On your turn, you're going to have a number of actions depending on which ship you choose, they will tell you, and those actions available to you, a lot of them will be to move around this map right here, which is made up of hexes. Uh, it's going to be randomly arranged, but it is a little bit predetermined that these corrupted tiles are going to be set at certain positions, so you'll have some idea of when they're going to come out. We'll get into why those are important later. Uh, everything else is pretty much random. All players will start on one tile in the center, and then they can move out wherever they desire to go. And depending on what tile they find, different things can happen. One of the common symbols that you will see a lot when you're flipping new tiles is the exploration symbol. You put a cube on it to mark it, and if your ship is at that spot, you can use the explore action. You draw one of these exploration cards. Uh, there could be harder ones or easier ones. They'll usually give you different choices that you can take. Uh, generally, they're going to involve a dice roll. Uh, you may be able to try to make a test to see if you can get a better result. You might end up getting some scrap, which is the currency of the game that you can spend for various different effects. Uh, you might be able to create some new opportunities, move characters around the board, all kinds of things that could pop up from these cards. So those are uh, can be very good, can be very helpful for you to try with potentially a little bit of risk involved as well. Uh, the other common symbol that you'll probably see is this enemy symbol. Now, when you go into a space that is controlled by enemies, you have to make a detection roll. You roll your set of dice, and if you get any of this symbol, this circle, that means you were detected. If not, you're safe and clear, you can do whatever you want. But if you do, an enemy is going to come out. Uh, the enemies go from levels one through four, and as the game progresses, they're gonna get harder and harder. Uh, they're gonna appear next to that spot with a set amount of health, whatever it may be. In this case, he's got 12 health and two shields. Uh, and shields, of course, are going to be harder to get through. You have to subtract one for each shield from your damage roll. When you're in combat, there are different types of rolls you can make. You can make an offensive roll, which is rolling both of your dice, or you can just roll one of them. That's a defensive roll. And that's a little bit safer because if you get two of these symbols at once, you receive a damage card in addition to losing health, and those can be permanent effects that will really hinder your ability to do well in the game. You can pay to get rid of them on your turn by spending some of your scrap, but it's gonna be an annoyance. You can also spend your scrap to repair yourself or someone else in the same space as you. So there are some different uh, maintenance actions that you can also take in addition to that on your turn. If two or more ships are on the same space, they have the option of teaming up to become a fleet. Uh, a fleet only has as many actions on their turn as the ship in there with the least amount of actions, so you will lose some opportunities in that regard. But when doing combat or making tests and exploration, you get to roll all of your dice together. So if there's a particularly difficult challenge, this can be a way for you to overcome it more easily. What you're really trying to do, your goal in the game, is to find these spots right here with these symbols. When one of those comes up, you're going to get one of these little uh, items to mark it, and those are the keys. And you want to go and you want to retrieve those, because that is ultimately your end goal. And they're sort of like the exploration cards on a larger scale, because they are going to have their own sets of challenges that uh, may require you to make dice rolls, might require you to just go there and spend action, spend energy, you might have to go there with a different multiple groups of people, uh, all kinds of things, and ultimately you will find this tile right here, and if you bring all the keys over there and activate them, you win the game. But this isn't just a nice tour of space, the clock is ticking. Uh, you have a board here where at the end of each round you will move this little cylinder up, and when it reaches one of these black ones, you will flip it over, which will have a number, and that will spawn an avatar, one of four. 
But the avatars are pretty much your big bads. And whether it's one or four, none of them are good. They all have huge amounts of health and shields. And they have an attack that actually will disable uh, possibly either your upgrades, your health, or your energy permanently. So there's something to be very scared about. What happens is they will hunt you down on the board. You roll this die each round. And they move that many spaces towards the weakest player. They, they know who's about to die. And if they kill someone, they're out of the game. Now, you can maybe fleet up together and, you know, push the odds to kill one. But if you do, they move two up the track wherever last is, and they will respawn back in. And more of them will respawn later as well. So you're going to have a lot of these guys on the board. You can try to flee them. But those corruption tiles that Jonathan mentioned earlier are actually special warp gates just for them. So they can use them to warp around the board, possibly, to get to you a lot quicker. Now, if they engage you and you try to run away from that, that will actually increase the timer on the board, which means either not only uh, closer to spawning another one, but if it reaches the end, that's game over. If you didn't get the, the keys to the uh, center corruptions tile, you lose. On the surface, this game really looks and feels like a 4X game, I would say. It's got that similar kind of space combat exploration vibe going on. Uh, although this one, of course, is completely cooperative. So it's got that element, but with these avatars and the fact that you're kind of trying to avoid them and even space them apart if you can, you know, knowing where these portal tiles are for them, uh, at least knowing when they might come up, you can kind of try to play around and make sure they're not coming too close together so you have some spaces to breathe. Uh, it almost has a feel of, I would say, something like a pandemic style game where you're kind of trying to manage the board and worry about things and getting things done in time. Because like you said, you're on a timer. Mm -hmm. You have to figure things out before it's too late. And sometimes, you know, you want to kill one of these, but really it's in your best interest to just keep searching for these keys and get them all to the place you need to get them to. Because if you don't, you lose. It can be challenging, at least yeah. for us. I will say 4X, except the extermination part, is solely against everyone. Right, right. Not not <laughs> and, other players. And they're already specced for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, I would definitely expect uh, player elimination. Someone's probably going to have to take the bullet. <laughs> but you like one of the things you can do, which we did, was like have two people control. Two, if you play two player with each person controlling two ships, mm -hmm. that way, uh, if someone does get eliminated, you still have a ship. And also, it can be fun to try out the ships because, like we mentioned earlier, uh, the two we have out here right now, we have a rogue and a warrior. The warrior obviously is much more combat related when the uh, rogue is more of like exploring usually. And some of those events will actually even reward you specifically like an option that can only be selected by the warrior, which does feel pretty good. Yeah, and there's also, we didn't even mention, some spaces have allies where you can actually purchase separate upgrades from them. So there's all kinds of ways you can really customize your ship. And every time you play, you can get sort of a different uh, set going on with your ship, which is cool and makes it feel it makes it feel more like a class, you know, like literally it says rogue, like you said, as opposed to just, oh, this is the warship, this is whatever kind of ship. You have your own things going on. Because you will need all the upgrades you can get. Because as we said, these avatars are, honestly, even the regular enemies gave us some bad luck rolls, you know. Yeah, yeah, it can be it can be tough. And it, it comes down to a lot of the time knowing when is the right time to fleet up and pool together. When is the right time to just avoid a combat altogether and not worry about it. Uh, and that can be a tricky thing to get your head around the first time you play, the first few times even. This also has a solo mode. So that's another one where you would control multiple ships generally. And uh, I think it works pretty well in that regard. Uh, you know, if the, these are all prototype components, just so you know, these will be uh, custom dice right now. They're just stickers and some other things will probably be different. Uh, but for the most part, I think we got a feel for what the game is going to be like. And hopefully we've given that to to you so you have an idea if this is something you would like. I think if you're a 4X fan but you also like more of a co-op side, maybe the competitive part of those games is Wait, a little too stressful for you. Th there's a Venn diagram where those two intersect? <laughs> you tell us then if, if you are that, uh, you might want to check it out. Again, it's called Exodus. It's on Kickstarter right now. We will have a link in the description below. Take a look. Let us know what you think. Uh, until we see you again, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Roll for Crit. Get an inspiration token by supporting us on Patreon and liking and subscribing to this channel. If you support us on Patreon, you'll get access to our audio expansion podcast. It's so good. 